Thank you all very much. Lieutenant Governor Guadano, Senate President Sweeney, Speaker Prieto, Republican leaders Kane and Bramnick, all the former governors, members of the Supreme Court, members of our congressional delegation, members of the New Jersey State Legislature, members of my cabinet, family and friends. Today, once again, the people of New Jersey have given me the opportunity to serve. And I thank each and every citizen for that honor. And once again, I've taken an oath where I've sworn to promote the peace and prosperity of our great state and its citizens. And a long oath it is, Chief, a long one. It is an oath that I've lived by for the last four years, and it is the oath I will live by for every day I am privileged to call myself your governor. The oath, though, is just a symbol of the bond that we have created with each other over the last four years. We have endured the worst economic recession of our lifetimes, and we have begun to triumph over it. We have confronted entrenched interests and their endless stream of money that have previously stood in the way of fiscal sanity for our state and educational excellence for our children. Together, we have pushed those interests back and put our children's future first. We have survived the worst natural disaster in our state's history, and we have worked together to restore, renew, and rebuild the state that we love. Now, each one of these challenges have been met by a new unified force in public life, a New Jersey setting the tone for an entire nation, a tough New Jersey, a resilient New Jersey, a proud New Jersey. A New Jersey that has put aside political partisanship on the important issues to our people, to take advantage of the opportunities each of these challenges has presented us with every day. A New Jersey that has brought pride to our people and leadership to our nation. And finally, this past November, New Jerseyans had the chance to decide if the bonds we have formed were strong enough to endure the heat of today's political campaigns. Would our elections confirm that the change we said had arrived on this very stage four years ago truly be beneficial for all of our citizens? Because you see, elections are about more than TV ads and debates and rallies. Each vote cast is an act of faith and trust. Faith in the strength of the bonds we have built. Trust in the hope that tomorrow will bring a better job for our people, a better education for our children, and a better day for all of our citizens. Now, the people... Now, the people have definitively set the course for the next four years. They have affirmed the decision to take on the big problems. They have validated the idea that our answers to our problems must be bold. They have rewarded the principle that we must tell the truth about the depths of our challenges and the difficulty of real solutions. And it wasn't just some of our people who affirmed this course. It was not a vocal plurality like four years ago. No, this time it was the largest and loudest voice of affirmation that the people of our state have given to any direction in three decades. Suburbanites and city dwellers, African-Americans and Latinos, 
women and men, doctors and teachers, factory workers and tradesmen, Republicans and Democrats and independents, together, they have demanded that we stay the course they have helped set to stand up for what is right. to fight the fights worth fighting, and most of all, to work together to make government work for each and every one of those voices of affirmation, for each and every one of our people. You see, the people of this state know that the only way forward is if we are all willing to take on what is politically unpopular, if we are all willing to share in the sacrifice, if we are all willing to be in this together. Now, we have no moral option, in my view, but to heed the voice of the voters, and that is exactly what I intend to do. Today, I thank all those who have once again placed their faith and trust in me, and I make this promise. I will not let up. I will insist we work together, and I will make this government truly work for those who pay for it. You see, I do not believe that New Jerseyans want a bigger, more expensive government that penalizes success and then gives the pittance left to a few in the name of income equity. What New Jerseyans want is an unfettered opportunity to succeed in the way that they define success. They want an equal chance at the starting line, not a government guaranteed result. Why? Because through hard work and being rewarded for that hard work, they know that they are part of their own success. We should make sure that government pursues policies that believe in the effort, the talent, and the optimism of New Jerseyans, not in the power of almighty government to fix any problem, real or imagined. So, let's be different than our neighbors. Let's put more money in the pockets of our middle class by not taking it out of their pockets in the first place. One of the lessons that I've learned most acutely over the last four years is that New Jersey can really be one state. Now, this election has taught us that the ways we divide each other by race, by class, by ethnicity, by wealth, and yes, by political party is neither permanent nor necessary. You see, our dreams are the same. A good job, a great education for our children, safe streets in our neighborhood, and core values which give lives real meaning. Those dreams are not unique to any one group in our state. And while government has a role in ensuring the opportunity to accomplish these dreams, we have now learned that we have an even bigger role to play as individual citizens. We have to be willing to play outside the red and blue boxes that the media pundits put us in. We have to be willing to reach out to others who look or speak differently than us. We have to be willing to personally reach out a helping hand to a neighbor or a friend suffering from drug addiction or depression or the dignity stripping loss of a job. New Jersey came together as one community when it mattered most, and now we must stay together. People of every background and belief, the government and our people, to help our fellow citizens reach their dreams. Now, there are times when we need to get along and just get things done. Because as Pastor Joe Carter said just this morning at the New Hope Baptist Church, all of us may be one yes away from our miracle. 
Now, that's true for each of us as individuals, for our state, and for our nation. Just one yes away from our own miracle. For the fact is that every one of God's creations has value. Every person, no matter what challenge they are facing in their lives, must believe that they have inside of them all of the God-given ability needed to be happy. And they will not believe that if all they hear from us is that life is unfair and that only government can fix that unfairness. They must first believe that self-worth comes from inside each of God's beings. Now, government cannot solve every one of these problems. The government can only be one part of the solution. The unity our people have felt in the last year plus as we have confronted tragedy and challenge must be a unity we build on to give every person a chance to reach their dreams. Now, those dreams begin for everyone with a growing economy. This growth will not happen by following the path that some of our neighbors seem prepared to pursue. For those who prefer economic growth and opportunity to government redistribution and higher taxes, I have this to say to you today. Come to New Jersey. You will be welcome here. In addition to a growing economy, here is how our government, our government, our government will lead the effort to create opportunity in New Jersey. We will make it our priority to have every child in New Jersey have a chance to get a good education. No matter what adult we have to offend, no matter where you came from, no matter what sacred cow we must slay, no matter how much we have to change the conventional thinking, we will no longer stand for the achievement gap which exists between our best and least educated children. This government, our government, we will end the failed war on drugs that believes that incarceration is the cure of every ill caused by drug abuse. We will make drug treatment available to as many of our nonviolent offenders as we can, and we will partner with our citizens to create a society that understands this simple truth. Every life has value, and no life is disposable. This government, our government, we will fight to continue to change so that we value our differences and we honor the strength of our diversity because we cannot fall victim to the attitude of Washington, D.C., the attitude that says, I am always right and you are always wrong, the attitude that puts everyone into a box that they are not permitted to leave, the attitude that puts political victories ahead of policy agreements, the belief that compromise is a dirty word. You see, as we saw in December regarding the DREAM Act, we can put the future of our state ahead of the partisans who would rather demonize than compromise. As your governor, I will always be willing to listen as long as that listening ends in decisive action for the people who are counting on us to do our job. Because you see, in the end, I have had no greater honor in my life than having twice been elected by my fellow citizens to be the governor of the state where I was born and raised. With that honor, come solemn obligations to make the hard decisions, to raise the uncomfortable topics, 
to require responsibility and accountability, to be willing to stand hard when principles are being violated, and to be willing to compromise to find common ground with all of our people, to work every day, night and day, to make New Jersey all can be, in short, to be the governor. To my fellow New Jerseyans, we started this journey together in a dark and foreboding time. In our history when hope was at a premium and trust had been squandered by a government that had been unwilling to tell you the truth. Today, we enter the final leg of our journey together with more hope than we have had in years and with the trust that comes from partners who have shared with each other the hard truths that come from decisive action. We are at the dawn of a new age of pride and growth in our state and its people. Let us move forward with the strength that comes from the belief that we have in each other. I believe in you, New Jersey, and I always, always will. It's only fitting that in this administration, with more hurricanes, snowstorms, flooding, and disaster of the natural sort than of any administration I can remember in my lifetime, that we begin the second term in the same way. <laughs> So to the folks who could not quite make it down the New Jersey Turnpike to be with us this morning, I understand. <laughs> to the hearty souls who are here, you have my thanks. And I end by saying what comes directly from my heart. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the great state of New Jersey.